Hello everyone, I am Erica of the storytellingjeweler.com and you are watching No One Has to Be Alone, my weekly BD broadcast that makes sure that even during lockdown and whatever happens, we can come together and create together. And today I am broadcasting at the same time uh, in the Storytelling Beading Club, which is our BD sisterhood. And I am also broadcasting on my Facebook page, The Storytelling Jeweler. In case that you are watching from the club, the, and, uh, and if you haven't done it yet, then you need to click on the first link that I posted to enable my broadcasting program to see your face and to see your name. So then I can say that, hello, Maria and Marianske and Elinor and Gunnel and Tanya is here and Katja and Cheryl and Angelica. Sarah, Sarah says, hello, everyone. Finally, it's no one has to be alone. Several of us thought yesterday that this is the day. Actually, some beaters were, I think, that uh, really like getting ready for no one has to be alone yesterday. Uh, I was not getting ready for no one has to be the only yesterday. Quite the contrary. Facebook sent me a notification that Erica, get ready for your upcoming live stream. And I freaked out like, what? Now? Today? In two minutes? But then I realized like, okay, I still have 24 hours to go. And we have Nancy here again, and Donna, and Claudia, and Janine, and Joanna. And then we have a Facebook user. Then we have Beverly, and Marianne is here, and Lutka, Elena is here, Maria, Kata is here, Susie from South Florida, Julie is here, and Pam from, New, uh, from NC USA and Belinda and Anne and Elaine and Joanna. Welcome, dear readers. I see many, many regular readers today and also some new faces. So I already prepared the file for you today. I was so super ready. The last thing that I needed to select, Cheryl will laugh at me. It was like I was running around without trousers. I was like, yeah, I have to like, yeah. <laughs> but last year when we were joking during quarantine that what are we wearing and most of us were like, yeah, like PJs, sweatpants, whatever then someone confessed, no trousers. <laughs> and, but I actually have someone without coats here, like the lady behind me, she's usually wearing a pretty lacy top, but I am actually using it sometimes for taking pictures. And I am taking part this week and also next week in a really nice workshop when I were a series of workshops every day uh, where I am learning how to take better pictures. So not even like the technical side, but like how to tell a story with pictures. And it's super nice. And also Sharon joined us. Hello, Sharon and Kirsten and Cheryl and Cheryl is here. And Cheryl noticed that I have different earrings. Yes, I was in the mood for like gray ones in the mornings, <laughs> morning, and uh, I changed them for yellow. I like yellow these days a lot. Pantone really influenced me, as you can also see from the many Pantone colored jewelry that I'm making these days. And Malka is here also. So the file is ready, super ready. And those of you that are new here. I am, hello Mechtab and Deb. I am posting a link now and you can go there to my page, the storytellingjeweler.com slash no one has to be the lone slash. It's always the same page. And then you can either download the file or if it's in your ability, 
then you can support the broadcast by buying the tutorial for five euros. And thank you so much for everyone who either decides for that option who, or who is helping us with a share, with recommending us to her bidding group, to her bidding friends, using the hashtag, no one has to bid alone. Every little help like this takes us a long way and makes sure that I can come back and we can come back every week and be together. And Alicia is here also. Hello, Alicia. Kristen, good morning from the States. Patricia. Tanya says yellow goes better with the blues than the gray ones of this morning. I agree. I agree. <sighs> And Sherry is here also. Yeah, I had a surprise visit in the morning in the storytelling bidding club because I wanted to talk a bit more about the design that we are going to be today. And it's this earring that you see on the screen. And uh, on the screen and in my hand also. <laughs> and uh, it is a design called Crossing Borders. And you know, usually I don't have, I, I don't have usually a problem to name my designs. However, I was really stuck with this one. Usually I really feel that this is the name of this design. I. It's just somehow coming to me, but this time it was not working out. So I asked my dear beading friends to help me out. And we had a little poll in the storytelling beading club and Tanya's suggestion, crossing border, got the most votes, but like by, by a lot. I think she got like, nearly 30 and the next options got like maybe three. So it really resonated with everyone. And the reason why, why Tanya suggested this name is not only because the design reminded her of like real crossroads, uh, but because week by week, we come together for no one has to be the one from all around the world. And a year passed and we made friends. We got to know each other. Still new friends are joining us, but we are every week crossing borders here during the broadcast. And today, I will actually ask you some questions about the country where you come from so we get to know each other even better, even from this side. So first of all, I would like to ask you, from which country are you, are you uh, participating? I know most of you, but I would like to like also say it to our new beaters because we have many new beaters today so nice so please tell me in a comment where are you coming from and so we can we can see where where we where we sit all around the world sarah is from sweden and beverly is from the usa and Katja is from Germany. Kimberly, hello, Kim, is from the States. Tanya is in Belgium. Eleanor is in Sweden. Kirsten from Germany. Mechtab is in Great Britain. Cheryl, England also. Cheryl, USA. We have a friend from Canada. Marianska is in the Netherlands, just like me. Vania, hello, Vania. Maria Luisa is from the States just like Donna and Sharon, Elena is in the Netherlands, Janine is in England, Eileen is from uh, New York, Joanna is also from the States, and from Great Britain, Cheryl from Canada, 
Patty from the States, Kristen from America, Marion from Germany, someone from the States again, Ulla from Sweden, Belinda also, Alicia and Deb too. Vania is from the States, born in Brazil. Vania is crossing two borders at the same time. Janet from the States, Asaria from the States, Pam also, Kata is from Hungary, but living in Sweden. Gunnel is from Sweden. Angelika is in Germany. Ludka from Slovakia, the country where I was born. Teresa from the States. Mariela in the Netherlands. Karin in Sweden. Oh my God, so many, so many countries. From my side, I was born in Slovakia. I have a Hungarian cultural background. And but I am living for nearly six years now in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. So crossing borders from all over the world. Sometimes we even have guests from Asia when Palak is joining us from India, for example. And we will talk about uh, our countries a bit more today. But let's do a material check so we can start bidding, actually. And since the beginning of this year, I started to give you little challenges in the storytelling bidding club, a bidding club uh, to like help us develop uh, our skills, help us develop how we think about bidding. In January, we were beating Pantone jewelry. In February, the task was to beat something else. If you beat all the time earrings, then beat a ring and so on. And this month, I invited you to improvise. And it was harder than I thought. I was really like, I was stuck for a while. You saw me how late I posted my final color combination in the club while I selected my starting color randomly already in the morning around like 10 o'clock. And it's five in the afternoon now here. So the task was, and it blame Kata, blame Kata for this. <laughs> the task was that you select a bead shape. I selected, for example, half tila beads, and then I grabbed all the colors that I have, I put them in front of me, I closed my eyes, and then I selected randomly a color. And the color that I selected is this green one, this matte, very nice green one. And then I had to uh, put together all the rest of the colors uh, to, this, to this half tila. So besides half tila beads, I used two colors, by the way, in this design. You will also need some quarter tilas. You will need gem duo beads. You will need two millimeter round uh, beads. I used drug beads, check drug beads. You will need Miyuki Delica size 11s. You will need size 15 round seed beads, also Miyuki. And optionally, you can use a drop. I am going to use some Preciosa Pearl drops today because I think that they go very well with the quarter tilas that I selected. You might have seen, well, you see that in my instructions that what to prepare for today, I say like tila beads, but there are the tila beads on the picture. So when you look at the middle of my motif, then you see that I have together the combination of a quarter tila, a half tila, and a quarter tila. And two quarters and a half, they make up for one for the size of one full tila bead. So you can decide here if you would like to use a tila bead uh, to make the look more unified, or if you would like to include more colors and more texture, and then you can go for my method. So I'm also curious to see that. What is your preference? And Vania says, my boss's father is from Slovakia. <laughs> Such a small country, but we are everywhere. <laughs> then we have also someone again from Sweden. We have a 
lots of Swedish ladies here usually. And we have born in Japan. It's Teresa, right? Teresa, there are you, Facebook user, born in Japan, <laughs> living in Michigan, USA, by way of Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Hawaii. And again, someone from Florida. So, shall we start? Shall we start, ladies? Did you prepare everything? Before we start, I am just briefly mentioning that our weekly special is still going on. So, so uh, if you would like to grab some new cabochons and if you would like to try Preciosa crystals, then until Tuesday, we have 10% off for every Preciosa cabochon at the storytelling eShop. So it's really worth to check it out. And I am just checking also the comments. Someone says, what method in your madness? You don't say that, Erica. I'm getting so organized, ladies, you wouldn't believe. I had time today even to schedule a pizza delivery for after the broadcast. You wouldn't believe. And during my preparations, I have a, I have such a nice new webcam. I hope that uh, I hope that it will it will work well during the broadcast. Adam surprised me with a new webcam that is like great for creatives and. I didn't switch on the light of it. It has like a ring light around around the around the camera, and it is developed specifically for creative. So you see better. So you can see better how I am working. And yeah, I even like attached it. I uh, attached it with like here here. It's it's very like improvised how my webcam looks like because my tripod broke a couple of weeks ago, but I am ready and I will be curious to see how do you like the new experience of seeing my bead mat. <laughs> and in the link, in the comments. Yeah, thank you ladies for helping out Teresa and hello Shirley. Teresa, I see your name now. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And next week, you don't have to do this. You had to do it only once. And yeah, he's, so, he's such a sweetheart. Betty Lou, good morning. And Cheryl says, it looks so clear and lovely. Oh, I already feel good. And shall we start, ladies? Let's get started, right? And, and Daniela. Good morning. So these are the first pictures. I will make my logo disappear because it's covering. Yeah, this is better. Instructions have priority before branding, of course. So let's get started. In case that you are using the combination of quarter tilas and half tilas like I do, then what you need to do is we are we are going to join the four beads together. So I will pick up a quarter tila, I will pick up a half tila and another quarter tila. And this is exactly the size of it a tila bead, but to make the beads behave like nice and do what I want to, I will connect them to each other first. So I picked up the three beads and then I bead through their second holes. Okay, I, I need to get used to it so you see exactly what I'm doing. 
and then I bead through the first holes again. If you are working with Tila beads, then you don't need to bead through the second holes because, well, yeah, that's just one bead. You don't need to make this extra step, extra movement to connect them. So if you are working with Tila beads, then just pick up four Tila beads and join them into a circle, please. And if you are working with my way of like giving more texture and colors to your to your uh, beadwork, then always please pick up the three beads, let them fall on your thread, and then join them by beading through the second holes, and then bead through the first holes in the original direction again. And you need to do this four times. This is how it looks like so far. And Kristen is asking about my ring light. It's like a ring light together with camera with a camera. And the brand is called Razor, I think. Yeah, send me an email afterward. Not a Facebook message because that's very hard to keep track of. But please send me an email and I can tell you the brand. And yeah, I have to like, thank you, Tanya. I have to, I didn't want you to see the edge of my bead mat because it's very colorful. But if the camera is so close to my, uh, to my bead mat, then it's very hard for me to stay in the, in the frame. Sorry about that. I, I have to get used to this. A little bit. <laughs> so again, again, I picked up the three beads. I beat through the second horse. And then I beat through the first horse again. I already have three. And then one more time. Kristen says the colors of the bead mat are okay, not too distracting. Okay, I was I was worried about that. I wanted to buy like a more universal, more or less less colorful bead mat, but there was nothing in stock, so this is this is what I could get. <laughs> but it's actually a really nice one. It's a bead on it board. My first ever fancy bead mat, and I like working on it. So I picked up the fourth combination. And now I am joining the four beads. Well, the four, they are the... Uh, the same as if I have had Tila beads. So I joined them by beading through the, my first fake Tila bead, in fact. <laughs> so I made this square of beads with a fake Tila, let's call it a fake Tila when I, when I uh, join beads together for to make up for a bigger bead. So this is how it looks like. And in the second step, I am going to add quarter tilas between the fake tila beads. And I hope I'm still allowed to improvise a bit, but I just see that I will actually want to use two colors of quarter tilas. So, you can also play with that option. And one important thing that usually I say like, meh, don't care too much about the, about the bumps of the beads 
of in the Tila family if you are not very particular about it. But here, if you are like making these fake Tila beads, then I think they look good if you make sure that the bumps are that the bumps are facing the same way. So they should face like the top of the motif. Am I moving better with my hands, ladies? That is it visible well how I am working? So I'm in step two and I am adding the quarter tilas between my fake tila beads. And then I continue until I reach the second quarter tila that I picked up. And then I bead through its open hole, the second hole, while turning into the opposite direction. So my crossroad is forming. This is how it looks like at the moment. Oh, it seems that you ladies like this. Okay. Thank you so much for the feedback. I'm constantly trying to like find ways how to make this easier to follow and more enjoyable and so on. So I'm really happy about this. And in step three, I am going to add always pairs of beads between the second holes of my quarter tila and the second holes of my fake Tila beads. And it will always be a combination of around 15 and a two millimeter drug pearl. Uh, and uh, always the number 15s, they have to be next to a quarter tila. So when I am exiting a quarter tila, then I pick up number 15 and then drug bead, two millimeter drug bead. And then I bead through the second hole of the fake tila. And then opposite uh, order, I start with two millimeter per and then round 15. And Sarah says, I have a confession to make. Don't be mad. I already beaded a pair of earrings, but instead I beat the cherry picking earrings, which I didn't do before. <laughs> Dear Sarah, what is important that you are here you are sharing the time with us and that you are having fun. What you bid if you bid an older motif or something else, it doesn't matter. Most important is your company and that I want to see your beautiful jewelry afterwards. <laughs> and we have Facebook user users joining us. I don't know who and Zuzi is here. And so I'm con I will continue with the number 15 and two millimeter round bead. Susie so is beading Rembrandt necklace. <laughs> well, I said, no problem, Sarah. I also finished. <laughs> ladies, ladies. <laughs> This is where it leads if I am doing things in a timely manner and then you go ahead and bead before or class. <laughs> I should be like more last minute to make you bead with me what I am working on. <laughs> Just joking. Tanya too. Katja too. Nicoline is here. No, Nicoline, I don't see your name. Can you please scroll back to the first comment and click on the link? How are you, Nicoline? Shirley says, sir, you are such a rebel. <laughs> I am curious, by the way, ladies, that if you work with my fake fake tila concept of building your tila bead from smaller beads, or if you use a real tila bead, 
Cheryl is on the fourth motive. She will make a bracelet. I forgive you if you make a bracelet because I think that a bracelet will look awesome from this motif. So I'm really, really looking forward. <laughs> And in the meanwhile, if we go back to our country and crossing borders topic, okay, first I want to hear if you if you are using real tila beads or fake tilas like I do. Vanilla was all made the Rembrandt. Beverly is using a real tila. Vanilla is asking, what is a fake tila? The way how I connected quarter tila, half tila, quarter tila. That's exactly the size of a tila bead. So to like better orientate ourselves, I started to call this like a fake tila because it's the size of a tila and you can substitute it for a tila bead. But in fact, I use the combination of quarter tila and half tila and quarter tila. Katja is using real tilas. Elena went for the combination of smaller tilas. It adds more colors and such an interesting contrast. Ula also went for the idea. Marion is also, Kirsten has a real tila. And Nicolin can't find it. Oh. And yeah, if someone can help Nicolene, that would be great. Nancy is using two millimeter fire polished instead of two millimeter drugs. It should be flat. You can maybe try with like size 11 seed beads instead of the two millimeter fire polished beads because two millimeter fire polished beads if they are like not true two beads they are not marked as true two but ordinary two millimeter fire polished beads i know it's a very stupid way of of calling them but that's how the manufacturers do two millimeter but in fact they are two and a half so they don't necessarily sit well, so Nancy, please try size 11s instead of the two millimeters, okay? Marianski is also using fake tilas. Ginny is here and Ginny is using a real tila. Asaria went for fake tila. Shirley is using real ones. Kata, fake it till you make it. <laughs> So, and I would like to explain now the next step. I don't know who needs it because it seems like everyone already has at least a pair of earrings or is halfway for a bracelet. But for those beaders who did not finish it yet, I would like to explain the next step. So I'm hiding the first three steps and showing the second batch of. Okay. By the way, ladies, how do you like this style that I am showing three images, three illustrations at the same time? I'm curious to hear. And Katja says, I mean, I use size uh, size eight seed beads instead of the drug beads nancy that's good to know thank you katya donna is watching cheryl yeah because uh, i am broadcasting at the same time from the club to the club and the page so that's why you see only some of the comments i posted it in the club the link Elena is beading with me, at least someone. <laughs> Not only are we in the same time zone and the same country, but also aligned on our bead mats. And Cindy is watching from Indianapolis. Joanna, thank you, love you. Thank you so much. So, I explain now the fourth step. 
what I am doing now that I will be adding the combination of Delica 11, size 15, and another Delica 11 between the size 15s next to the quarter tilas. Then I bead through the size 15 and the and the two millimeter pearl and I pick up I try to arrange the beads that they are nicely in a V shape and then I pick up a delica bead a gem duo I bead through the second hole of the gem duo bead. I pick up another delica and then I bead through two millimeter round pearl and number 15 seed bead. So this is how it looks like. At the corner, I always have over the quarter tila the combination of Miyuki Delica 11, round 15, Miyuki Delica 11, and over the tila or fake tila bead, I have the combination of Delica 11, Gem Duo, and another Delica 11. And I repeat this all around. And let's see the comments. And Liv joined us. Hello, Liv. Tanya likes it. That's a great way to show the images so beaders can bead on their own speed. And it's very nice to see your bead mat and the images in aqua sizes. Okay. I'm super happy that we are like boiling down to what works. There were lots of experimenting during the past years, but I think we are like getting to the like ultimate setup. And Sherry is here and she likes the triple split screen. Uh, Bea is asking if she can use a super duo instead of a gem duo. Lovely ladies, if you are substituting something for a completely different bead shape, you will need to do your own testing. Unfortunately, it's not in my powers to test everything for every possible combination. But so if you are, it's absolutely possible to substitute something, but you have to do your homework and you have to play with it on your own. And then preferably share the result of your playtime so other beaters can learn from it. Thank you so much for understanding. I still don't see your name. Kata is also beating with me. Susie, I don't have the beats to beat today, so I thought I would just observe for my first visit. Welcome, welcome, Susie. Shirley is beating with me. Belinda says it's great like this. Tanya has a connectivity issue. I'm sorry. Judy is from South Carolina. Beverly is using a diamond duo and it works instead of a gem duo. Those are absolutely interchangeable. Diamond duo, gem duo. They have the same shape exactly and the same size. So there you don't need to worry. But back to my question and crossing borders. I have a question for you. We come together every week virtually, but if we had the possibility to meet and the luck to visit each other, tell me if you could choose one place from your neighborhood, where would you take your beading friend? Would you take her to a park nearby, to your favorite museum? Would you take her to the city center? What would you show her if a beading friend from no one has to bead alone? 
visited you in real life if 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 we would be able to really cross the borders and while you are thinking uh, about it then please uh, then i will uh, i will share where i would take you if you could visit me in real life so as probably most of you know i am kind of like a coffee addict so i would take you to a nice walk in my neighborhood i live in amsterdam the capital of the netherlands and in the part that is called old west and i would take you to my favorite coffee place we would grab an espresso or a cappuccino together we would also visit the lovely local market where we can taste some uh, international delicacies together then we would we would walk further and we would go to the park called Wondel Park that is like the most famous in Amsterdam and it's very beautiful and full of parrots <laughs> So that would be what I would like to show you in my, in my city. And Eleanor, a walk through our parks. Kata, thank you so much for helping, Belle. Asaria, but take a bidding friend to Taos Pueblo. Shirley says, I teach at my local beach store, so I would have her meet me there, then go for a walk on the beach. That sounds really nice, Shirley. Can I visit you, please? <laughs> Vania says, Art Museum and all the museums in Washington, D.C. Kristen, maybe an art museum. Cheryl, my park that I live next to, Birkenhand Park. Katya says, a walk through a little historical old town. Zuzi says, I'm taking you all to Antiquariate Coffee in my hometown. Lovely place, Erika knows. Yes, Erika approves. Coffee place with old books and antiques set in small parks. So it's lovely both inside and outside. We can also be there. Marielle says, I could go to two bit groups, one in The Hague, one in Rhindike. Both shop owners are called Monique. <laughs> Kirsten says, I would take my beading friends to a little very old cafe. I live next to the Atlantic coast in the north of Germany. Gunnar says, there is a castle from the medieval time. It's absolutely marvelous. And Ula, the archipelago going to the outer islands by ferry. Ula is from Sweden also. Tanya says, maybe I would go to Mechelen, a city nearby the village I live. Mechelen has many historical buildings like the Centrum Bautstoren, but Mechelen has also some nice parks. And... Janet would take us to the Rocky Mountains National Park. Elena, she says, to the very colorful haven in my district where we would go in a cafe and enjoy a cup of coffee. Then we would go to the center, enjoy the medieval center of the city and Groningen Museum famous for its architecture in a form of a ship. You live in a very beautiful city, Elena. I love it. Vanya says, I also live one mile from four different wineries. We have to visit Vanya. Angelika says, I will take all to the city. There is a tiny small quarter called Schknor. There are houses which are from uh, the 18th century, 1730. It's so nice. I'm dreaming to open a beach up there. 
Nancy says, I would take you on a cruise of the Thousand Islands. Nancy is using size 11 and it works well, by the way. Marion would take us to the Cologne Cathedral. It's a must see. Kathleen would take us to the ABBA Museum and around that island, also the old city. Kathleen actually took me to the old city last year and it was two years ago. Oh my God, time is flying and it was beautiful. <laughs> Nicolin, thank you so much. It works. And Joanna, thank you so much for helping out, Nicolin. Ula, can we share some photos later? Absolutely. Let's start, like, let's post where would we take in the storytelling beading club, where would we take our beading friends? And where will we take each other when we can visit each other? Judy says, beautiful. Is there a written pattern for this? As I am not able to bid, bid with you all right now. Yes, Judy, you can download it from the storytellingjeweler.com slash no one has to be the lawn slash. I just posted, posted the link. And Sherry says, there are two old town areas. We might have to visit the park and art museum there. There is also a rose garden. That sounds very nice. Joanna says, I would take you to my local beach shop for a visit and then to lunch. There are lovely restaurants close by. They are all right because the lake and it is uh, right uh, beside the lake and it is beautiful in the summer to walk along the canal. Sarah says, I live 25 minutes from Helsingborg in Sweden. We will take the boat's ferry over to Helsingborg in Denmark. That takes only 20 minutes, crossing another border. <laughs> there is the best ice cream ever. You got me, Sarah. A little shop that has been there forever. They bake the most amazing waffles. Okay, I go to Vania to, ha to have some wine. Then I visit Sarah. We should visit Sarah for those that ice cream. Then Patty says, we would have to go to the beautiful beaches, sailing on a warm spring day and dining on fresh seafood. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> And Sarah says, or the beach here in Engelholm, only five minutes away. Oh, ladies, you are like, I think we are, we are, we are traveling all around the world thanks to these beautiful ideas and so nice experiences that, that would that, that are awaiting us. And in the meanwhile, I managed to tie a knot on my needle. And I have to remove my needle because I made a mistake. Okay. And in the meanwhile, Verle joined us. Welcome, Verle. And Serial says, okay, I will not show the comments now because then I'm not beating and I don't make any progress. <laughs> Cheryl says, I am so close to Liverpool. I guess I would have to take any music fans to the Beatles sightseeing thing and take a ferry across the Mersey. <laughs> and Lutka says, I live in the capital of Slovakia, uh, where we have the river Danube and the mountains, the small Carpats. And it's a beautiful city with an interesting history. Celts were living here. Cel Cel Celtic? Cel Again, we are back to my lousy pronunciation. I don't know how to pronounce like Celtic, Celtic, Celts, Cel Celtic people. And there is a says it's starting to sound like we need to organize a bidding cruise and hit all of this certainly jojo is here hello jojo she says the ice cream factory is in engelholm oh my god that's even better than uh, than uh, everything i would expect like wow 
Wow, ice cream factory? I have never been to an ice cream factory. <laughs> and I'm adding my last combination of Delica, Gem Duo Delica. And afterward, I am beading through the two millimeter round bead number 50. I'm making mistakes today. Someone said a couple of weeks ago that, Erika, I haven't seen you frogging during a broadcast yet. Now I am like showcasing how do I frog and that I, I frog. <laughs> so I continue beading after adding the last new group. I continue beading until I have crossed also the combination of Delica and number 15 and another Delica bead. Here it is. So on the corners, I have the seed beads and on the sides I have, if I imagine this as a square, then on the sides I have the gem duos. And I feel now add half tila beads. I will use my designated color of half tila beads. <laughs> I will add half tila beads between the combination of Delica, number 15 Delica, and between the gem duo. Like this. And on top of the gem duo, I will add the combination of Round 15, three Miyuki Delica beads, and another round 15. So I bead through the second hole of the gem duo. And then again, I pick up a half tila and I bead through the combination of Delica round 15 and Delica bead. And here, if you have a feeling that this little V shape is not pointy enough, then what you can do is that just skip the number 15 in between and bead through only the Delica beads. And Nicolin says, I wish we could make this nice tour of visiting all places right this weekend. That would be wonderful. Manuela is here. And Teresa says, I have visited Bratislava before. It's beautiful. I loved it. Shirley likes my color. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was like, really, this was like somehow really hard for me. I'm always like, yay, going for challenges and so on. And but today I was like, I was struggling a bit. When, when I selected the half tilas, these green half tilas randomly, then I was a bit like, I have to say, I was like, I did not expect this. Why? Why not turquoise? Why not yellow? Because I think like, I, I, I really wanted to bead with some cheerful more cheerful tones but then i decided to like embrace it and cheer it up it's by the way a very nice green matte green color that i use pretty often but i needed some but it needed some happiness <laughs> today and i actually i really liked the gemstone rose pendant that Kata beaded a couple of days ago. I think Zuzi got her super addicted to the gemstone rose design, earrings and, and pendant as Kata is beading one after another and Zuzi made already like 12 combinations, like really 12. I'm not making this up. And uh, I liked the way that Kata put a splash of strong colors in the middle and then the same color came back or like a similar shade of the color came back I'm frogging on 
again and uh, I have to go back and uh, the same color came back a little bit in the color of the gem dual and I wanted to achieve something similar that I have this splash of red and purple in the middle and then I'm gradually changing to the gray and bronze and the green but the warm tone comes back a little bit with the gem dual beads so yeah of course like very different than what uh, Kata did but I liked the the way how she put together the colors and Jojo says, in my town is the amazing nature walks, beaches, Hof's Haller, where they filmed Bergman film, beautiful views, maybe also Norwegian gardens, another ice cream factory, and probably lots more, and by beading in my studio. Oh, Jojo, that sounds wonderful. Like, ladies, how many ice cream factories do you have in Sweden because like everyone has an ice cream factory around the corner or how does it work it sounds really nice <laughs> so I'm adding still my half tilas <laughs> And Sarah says, I didn't know you lived that near to me. So you ladies maybe even can make actually the trip together when we are allowed to meet again. <laughs> and how is it going with your beading ladies? Do you have any questions? How does it feel? Or how did it feel if you have already beaded this before the broadcast and now you are working on something else? Kata lives next to a chocolate factory park. Marabu. Marabu, you sent me Marabu. It was, it was really nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> And Jana says, we would have to do a lot of walking in Sweden so we can try all the different ice creams and the chocolate, indeed. And I have added my last half tila bead in step five. And I want to finish by beading through a delica and a number 15 between two delica beads. And in step six, I am kind of like framing my whole motif and I will be adding pairs of delica beads between the second, uh, between the number 15 that I am exiting and of course all the number 15s in the same position and the second hole of the half tilas that I also, uh, that I added in, the, uh, pre in step five. And I am going to add a single delica bead between the half tila and between the group of seed beads that is framing the gem duo. So I am exiting now the number 15. I pick up a pair of delicas and then I bead through the open hole, the second hole of a half tila. And then I pick up one single delica and then I bead through the number 15, three delica, number 15 color uh, bead combination and then I repeat this all around between the beads on top of a gem duo and the half tila there goes one single delica and then between the half tila and the number 15 there goes a pair of delica beads and Elena says, I so like this design and my colors that I already plan to make earrings and a pendant. Oh, I'm glad, Elena. Marabu is Sarah's favorite chocolate. And 
Shirley says, I actually had a drop to put on this pair. This is a winter white type of earring. I really love how pretty it turned out. Did you improvise? Did you did you improvise with us, Shirley? Lutka says, her thread tension is maybe too much because it's not staying flat. It, it is probably the reason. Always like put it down on your bead mat and just tap on it gently to like know that how much do you need to pull but yeah when it's when it's uh not fl laying flat then usually it's with the thread tension if you are using uh, the same type of beads that i do and not toho beads instead of miyuki that can also make a difference sometime nitty says i live close to a coffee fa Oh my God, to a coffee factory. Every time I pass it, I just get completely nuts for coffee. Janine is suggesting licorice ice cream. No, no. Licorice is a big no-go for me. <laughs> I know that our Swedish friends would probably instantly jump on the opportunity of eating licorice ice cream and also our dutch friends and maybe even our belgian friends here but not the hungarians not the hungarians i know that i can speak also for katalin in this that no not the not the licorice <laughs> and karin says i live outside malmo just beside the sea and the harbor I love harbors. <laughs> Cecilia, hello, Cecilia. She says, maybe that would be the theme of the trip. Ice cream in the world. Zuzi is asking, is anyone beating UK flag colors? And Nancy says, hi from British Columbia, Canada. Hello, Nancy. Pam says, my colors are green and gold for our upcoming St. Patrick's Day. That's a good idea. Are you from Ireland? <laughs> Tanya, even if living in Belgium, no licorice for me. Angelica says, we like punch ice cream. <laughs> Sherry loves licorice. And is beating UK colors. See you later, Vania. <laughs> and this Brexit thing. <laughs> and while I am finishing the framing of my motif, and I will also add my drop, I have my third question for today for crossing borders. So, do you have, like, what, uh, what do you think? What kind of treat, food, snack, drink is the most surprising in your country for a visitor? What is like, it doesn't have to be bad, it can be nice, it can be, it can be yucky, but what is like surprising and very typical for your country? Marianske says, I like licorice, but not licorice ice cream. So like I'm thinking that like about which of my cultures should I take an example from being a mixture of Hungary, Slovakia, and the Netherlands. But I think like it's actually my absolute favorite thing to eat. So I would like to mention, and if you visited me when I am in Slovakia, then I would take you to taste sheep cheese, pasta with sheep cheese. It's called Brinzove Halushki, and it's my absolute favorite. And it is like kind of a gnocchi made of potatoes. 
and then you add lots of sheep cheese, soft sheep cheese on top of it. And you know, when, when uh, friends ask me like, what do you miss while you are living in the Netherlands? Then my answer is sheep cheese. So actually every time when someone is visiting me and they ask me what to bring, I say like, sheep cheese. And the last time, when I was in Slovakia and Nitu was so good to lend me a freezing box or like a, a cooler box, which we could take in the car. And I brought it back full of sheep cheese. And then I put it in the freezer so I can, I can still have some cheese, uh, sheep cheese sometimes. And let's see your answers. Oh, Mariela says stroke waffles, of course here in the Netherlands. I love strobe waffles, the real ones from the market. And Jojo would, uh, uh, would uh, offer some salty licorice. And Karin, I hope you would take us for ice cream and to the brewery. Oh, and I hope your thumb heals soon. Christina is from Belgium and it would be chocolate. <gasps> Eleanor, rotten fish, so streaming, but she doesn't like it. <gasps> Nancy, root beer ice cream. That sounds interesting. Oh, I made Nitty long for, for the sheep cheese too. <gasps> Katja says, in Frankfurt, we love to drink Abelvoy. It is like cider. You love it or you hate it. There is nothing in between. <laughs> Teresa loves the sheep cheese thingy. <laughs> Shirley is in the southern US, so maybe biscuits and gravy. Cecilia says, yeah, the fish more fer fermented than rotten with a strange smell. No specific drink though. Steve, Stefan says, loving the way your color choices are coming together. <laughs> Thanks, Dawn. Elena says, in my country of origin, Belarus, from the drinks maybe, it would be kvash, drink made on basis of the bread and from the dishes, draniki, national dish from potatoes. <gasps> Katalin, chimney cake. My Dutch friends, you can actually taste chimney cake in Amsterdam. There is a place called Chimney Cake House and you have to go there or we have to go there one day when we can meet again. It's wonderful. Maria would uh, say sour candy. Janine says, when I was living in Nuremberg some years ago, I had to have Marmite sent out to me. <laughs> Semla from Ula. Cheryl says, traditionally, where I am in England, people ate a lot of uh, offal. Here, hearts, liver, stomach, etc. Nowadays, it's very mixed with history of Irish and Chinese communities, but still many of us turn everything into a sandwich. There is a stew called scoes that is traditional too. Lutka agrees with me that sheep cheese is the best. <laughs> Kirsten, in my area, little North Sea shrimps with fried eggs and fried potatoes. Sharon says the USA is so big and each region area has their own special things. Here in the South, I guess we are known for our, uh, for sweet tea. I don't drink it myself as I do not sweeten my tea. But the Southern sweet tea is so sweet, it is like syrup. That's super interesting. I have never heard of it before. Maria says, in Grace, frappe, gold coffee. Nancy says, your sheep cheese sounds like poutine. No, sorry, Nancy. No offense. I have tasted poutine. I don't like it. This has nothing to do with poutine. This is, this is like... Uh, Putin is, if I remember it well, then it's like uh, potato chips and then cheese on top of it grated. This is like 
the sheep cheese melts kind of and it's with the potato gnocchi so it's more like pasta with soft cheese on top of it Shirley wants the recipe <laughs> Joanna, we would have to take a train ride to Chicago, but Kurt's popcorn is amazing. Cecilia, perhaps ice cream with a taste of willow herb that grows everywhere. That sounds also super interesting. Of course, of course. Surely we actually have a storytelling recipe book there was a first edition that I put together for as a Christmas present for the members of the Storytelling Beading Club. But I would love to make a second edition of it for next Christmas. So please keep posting and I will, uh, I will save the recipes and then make a second edition of the Storytelling Cookbook for next Christmas. Ula says, Semla is a bun with whipped cream and almond and candy filling, most times traditionally served with warm milk. That sounds really good. Poffertjes! I love poffertjes. <laughs> worried about like unusual words. <gasps> Janine says, I live near Harry Potter world. We can there we could drink butter beer there. You know Janine, the ladies of the storytelling beading club, they got me really hooked on Harry Potter. So you got me there. <laughs> and I added in the meanwhile all my seed beads around the motif and I am now adding my drop and originally I used a preciosa pendant drop but I, I thought that this light burgundy uh, pearl will uh, pear shaped pearl will look better with this color combination so I am now modifying the original a little bit so I, at first, I attach, I want to have a little bit of distance between my main motif and between the drop. So first I attach a Miyuki Delica 11 with square stitch to the middle Delica where a gem, uh, gem duo is and then Okay, I randomly found a number, a size 11 seed bead, wonderful, because I think it fits better. I think it was accidentally mixed between my uh, size 15s in the same color. And then I pick up my pearl. This was in the romantic press, it was a box, by the way. And then I pick up a size 15 and I bead back through the pearl drop and through the size 11 seed bead. And lives also near the Harry Potter experience. <laughs> then I bead again through the new Delica bead that I added. Then I just want to like strengthen this connection. So I bead down through the size 11, through the pearl and the size 15, and then back again, there and back and then I bead through the seed beads on the edge of my motif to get exactly to the opposite side so that I can add a little loop for my earring hook. And actually Nancy was asking, I just noticed afterward, after the broadcast, her uh, question that how do you turn a motif into an earring when it is not designed to be an earring? And in that case, what you need to do is it's super easy. You can either add a loop right away to a seed bead 
or if you want a little bit longer connection between the main motive and between the earring hook, then you can start by adding a size 11 delica or another seed bead like I do here that I pick it up and then I bead through the bead that I am exiting one more time and then I repeat this part of the thread path to make it stronger and I bead through the new bead again I pick up five pieces of around 15 seed beads and I make a loop out of them and you can do it this with any design basically you just determine a place where you want to add a loop and you add a loop of five number 15 seed beads for example and let's look at the comments in the meanwhile and ladies this was actually it i finished my motif so if you have questions or something what you would like to share about this then please say it in a comment so i can answer your questions and in the meanwhile teresa yes it's more like goat cheese but not like chevre it's very hard to explain it's more like cottage cheese but with a softer consistency oh and elena says and in the winter all in poland in the netherlands and cheryl says i want to try all the foods mentioned now but i am too lazy to make them anyone else hungry oh my god my stomach is like rumbling already and i uh, ordered my pizza only oh my god i will get it only more than in an hour i'm super hungry <gasps> and patty says in florida from october to may we would have stone crabs with drawn butter hush puppy you confused me with hush puppies i'm a foreigner from puppies i am thinking about dogs but i have a feeling that you are talking about something else than real puppies <laughs> and so strawberry shortcake or key, la key lamb pie i love key lamb pie for dessert personally i'm a coca-cola drinker but there are lots of options micro brewery beer margaritas iced tea lemonade we have a full menu from patty and <coughs> sorry sharon says i like your color Serika. similar to what i picked out only i used red instead of pink picked out red gray and white sounds really good sharon <coughs> and Shirley also wants to visit uh, patty me too me too <laughs> joanna too Donna, I think so too. <laughs> Nicolene is also getting hungry and Angelica is leaving for dinner. <laughs> okay, Patty, thank you so much for the clarification. <laughs> Patty says, hush puppies are fried dough balls. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, ladies, uh, if you don't have any questions left, then let's continue the after party and let's see each other beautiful crossing borders, earrings or pendants or bracelet in, bracelets in the storytelling beading club. It was wonderful to cross some borders with you today. I really, really enjoyed spending time with you. Thank you so much for for coming and beading with me. And thank you so much. If you decide to recommend No One Has To Bead Alone and the storytellingjeweler.com to your beading group, to your beading friends. And yeah, thank you so much for beading with me today. Don't forget about our Preciosa deal. 
and let's continue in the storytelling beading club i'm really curious to see your colors and to read how did it feel for you to improvise see you next week ladies and take care and have a wonderful weekend bye bye